Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. It's another day that the Lord has made and uh, we hope that you'll be able to do something. Uh, take the advantage to uh, share scripture on their Facebook feed, uh, share a spiritual message, share some memes. I mean, if they have a scriptural message, uh, go ahead and do that. And just mention God whenever you have the opportunity. And so, uh, we're, we're going to have a lesson today called The Truth That Frees. And so, there, there are several different ways to view things that produce freedom. And some are from God and others are from Satan. And the word truth is defined as conformity to fact or reality. And that's an important uh, definition to pay attention to. Conformity to fact or reality. And the thing about it is truth never changes. It's always the truth. It's always right. And uh, it's real while the facts may change. And, and so I'll show an example of this in a few moments. See, our world is full of truthful facts. I mean, here's, here's a fact. Ge geographical truth. Sacramento is the capital of California. I mean, not Los Angeles, not San Francisco. There's a historical truth. George Washington was our first president under the Constitution, not Abraham Lincoln or John Kennedy. A mathematical truth. Two plus two equals four, not three or five. And there's a chemical truth that two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen yields water, not sulfuric acid or salt. And there's a biological truth. If you plant a tomato seed, you get a tomato plant, not corn nor beans. And so every realm of our existence has the element of truth. And truth is always present. However, that doesn't mean that truth can be ignored. And a lot of times it is. So an example of how facts can change yet remain the truth is this. See, how far is it from where I live to Los Angeles? Well, if I check Google, I found, find that it's about 360 miles. And yet, if I, if I lived in Dallas, the distance would be 1,439 miles. And let's decide you're going to leave Dallas and drive to Los Angeles. You drive about 250 miles to maybe uh, Odessa and ask them, well, how far is... Uh, is Los Angeles and it's all of a sudden 1170 something miles you drive down maybe as far as Tucson and then you find out it's about 800 miles 600 miles depending on where you are on your trip you're gonna get different answers how far it is to Los Angeles <clears throat> and, and so that's just because the facts have changed but you got different answers in Every time you ask somebody, you got a different answer, but yet they were all correct based upon the facts. <clears throat> you know, in many ways, the Bible truths are handled the same way. Sometimes answers are given that are different, but the facts have changed. And it is still the truth what is spoken. Where the problem is, is when people take one truth that they'd like to hear and they'll stick with that and ignore all the other truth that the Bible presents to us. And so another problem we face in the religious world is when man tries to change the facts of the truth. I mean, so when man has reinterpreted the facts to form a different truth from the original, which comes from God, that presents problems. And these people are going to have to answer to God for that because God does not change. His facts do not change. His truth does not change. And it's always going to be there. Now, something that comes from Satan is the fact that many have freed themselves from God's word so as to sin any way they want without bothering their conscience. I mean, they, they just basically simply say, well, there's no such thing as truth, so we can't know what truth is, so we form our own truth. And so that's what they do that. And uh, they don't want to be bothered, so they just ignore the fact that there is a God. They ignore the fact that God has requirements for mankind, and they ignore the fact that there's going to be a judgment. 
So when they convince themselves there is no such thing as hell, then there's really no consequence to anything they might do. And so this is a freedom that Satan gives them, but it's not going to help them in the end. They're still going to stand before God because that's a fact. That's the truth. They will stand before God and give an account. This applies to every person. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14 tells us that. We're all going to be judged. Everything's going to be revealed. And, of course, some people change the truth into a lie to promote their own doctrines, their own beliefs, their own teachings, and their own lifestyle. You know, 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12 says they did it because they do not have a love for the truth. They don't love the truth of what God says. They want to change it to whatever they want it to say. And so, and in our world today, many question whether truth is a possibility in the religious realm because there's so many different teachings, so many different doctrines, it's, it's confusing for a lot of people. And so what it comes down to is every group makes up their own truth. And so... And, of course, in order to do that, they just ignore the Bible, which is the truth. So we're going to notice a few things about the truth that frees. You know, in John 8, 28 through 32, Jesus made the statement, the truth shall set you free. Now, what was his context here? The context, he tells us that the only way by which we can be made free from sin is through the truth. And specifically, following the instructions that come from the truth. And this also implies that unless we are made free from sin by the truth, we are still in our sins and we're going to be lost. We can follow the doctrines of men and feel, okay, my, I'm okay now. And, and yet, the Bible tells us we're still lost. So we don't want that to happen. So we're trying to warn people that there's only one way. Jesus is that way. And so let's see what the Bible has to say about the truth that frees. The truth that frees is the word of God. I mean, let, let's, just, let's just face it. Jesus said, John 17, 17, thy word is truth. And, and so, and of course, we can go back to the Psalms 119. Every word of God is truth. And the entirety of his word is truth. We find that in Psalm 119, 160. And I think one, okay, senior moment there. But anyway. He illustrated the importance of the word in conversion. You know, Luke 8, 11 through 15, talking about the soils. The seed is the word of God. The seed that was planted. I mean, so that we, we, we know different, four different types of individuals receive that word. Uh, some of them just outright rejected it, but some of it would actually produce good fruit. And, and so hearing the word should produce faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And so this is just the first step. We must be doers of the word. You know, James 1, 22 through 25 says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. And so it's just not enough to know that, okay, God said so. We've got to do what God said to do. All right, the truth that frees is that which should be preached. You know, that's what Paul said, you know, Ephesians 4, 15, he says, speaking the truth in love. And so since the truth that frees is the word, when we preach the word, we're preaching the truth. Not only are we preaching the truth, but we're preaching the love of God. And that's what it comes down to. 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, the instructions to Timothy were to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And so this is precisely what Jesus wants when he said, go preach the gospel. Why? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, uh, Romans 1, 16. And so they took that commission very seriously. And when the great persecution arose just a short time later, uh, Acts 8, 4 says they went everywhere preaching the word. And, of course, the church was growing at a tremendous rate. See, the truth that phrase must be known and understood. Again, Paul said so, 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4. God desires all men to be saved. We should know that. And what does God do for us? He gave us the tools we need so that we could be saved. 
The problem is a lot of people don't want to follow those rules. They don't want to follow and use those tools that God gave us, and therefore they're going to be lost. And most of them will not know that they're lost until it's too late. See, the idea of knowing implies understanding. In Ephesians 5, 17, understand what the will of the Lord is. And so that can only come through the true knowledge that he gives to us. And, but how can we come to understand the word of God? You know, a lot of people say, well, no, you can't understand it. You know, that, that's what one group did. They taught their, their parishioners, you can't understand it. I mean, the only people who can understand it are the priests. And so basically everybody just stayed in ignorance and they just did whatever they were told to do. And that didn't help anybody's souls. And when, when people started realizing, they decided to try and reform the church back in the uh, 1500s, 1600s. And, and then that, that didn't work out. So some people said, well, let's just go back to the Bible and restore things back to the original. And that's what we call the restoration movement. And, and so a lot of people got on with that. And yes. So we're confident we can teach the truth that, that basically we go back to the Bible. We teach what the Bible says, we're speaking the truth. And as long as we're teaching the truth, God's going to be happy with us. No, people aren't going to be happy with us. That, that's quite obvious because the truth is hard, too hard for many to handle. And so that's what we do. And so we, how can we understand when we read? I mean... You know, Second Timothy, uh, well, by, by reading uh, Ephesians 3, 3 through 5, Paul says, when you read, you may understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. Second Timothy 2, 15, study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. All right, the truth that frees should be received and believed. Yeah, it's one thing to receive it, but then do you believe it? Well, that, that's kind of implied there, but still, uh, it needs to be believed. Paul said so, 1 Thessalonians 2.13, he told the Thessalonians, you received it as the word of God, which it is, not the word of man. And, and so what Paul taught them, they, they, they understood to be the word of God, not just some teaching of a man. And the idea of receiving implies the believing there. John 1, 12, as many as received gave them the right to become children of God. How do we become children of God? Through obedience to the gospel. And, and that is because we, we received the word of God, then what do we do? We believed it and we obeyed it. So believing Im implies obedience as well as just a mental assent. Well, okay, I believe there's a God. And the, the believing part is, okay, I believe there's a God. God said I need to do this, and so I'm going to do it. So, so that, that's what the believing in, implies and, and conveys. And some people just say, belief, that's all you have to do is just believe and you'll be saved. Of course, that's false doctrine. And, and so it's more than just a belief only, I mean, or faith only, as some people try and say it. I mean, it's putting into application what God has told us to do. And so receiving and believing the word of truth frees because it saves our souls. You know, James 1.21, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. All right. The truth that frees must be obeyed. And this is what we've been leading up to. It must be obeyed. See, Peter said so. You know, 1 Peter 1.22 says, you have purified your souls by obedience to the truth. That's, what, that's how it comes about. Just because truth exists does not mean that we're saved. Just because truth exists does not mean that uh, we've purified our souls. But through our obedience to that truth, then our souls will be purified. And we teach that we and we're taught the benefits of obeying the truth. You know, Romans 6, 17, 18, he says, You are the no longer slaves of sin. I mean, you are the servant of the one whom you serve. And if you choose to serve the Christ and you're obedient to the Christ, you're no longer slaves of sin. And so, I mean, that that's a great advantage. 
And of course, we know the consequence of not obeying the truth. You know, Second Thessalonians 1, 7, 9, those who do not know God and nor keep his commandments. I mean, this is going to, the, the retribution is going to come upon them. All right. Sadly, the truth that frees can be ignored. I mean, here's another reality we just have to face. And you know what? This is what Satan wants. He wants us to ignore it. He doesn't care if we basically recognize anything about the truth that we've already talked about, just as long as you ignore it. I mean, that's okay. Or ignore some of it. I mean, and that, that's good enough for Satan because that'll keep us out of heaven. We have to do all the word of God. You know, when Jesus said, all authority is given to me, go and baptize all nations, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And right before he did that, he told his disciples, I will send you the Holy Comforter who will guide you into all truth and remind you of all things that I said. And so when the apostles started teaching the truth, including the, the gospel, I mean, they were teaching those things that God wanted us to know. And so we're supposed to do all those things. And Satan, he doesn't care if you believe. He doesn't care if you uh, uh, do some obedience as long as you don't do it all. I mean, that's what Satan wants. And so when people ignore God's word, they have no rules to follow. And basically they can do what they please. And to them, they're not restrained by a God that puts and imposes uh, rules upon them. So in a sense, they feel that that's their own form of freedom. Well, they, they may do it while in this life, but when this life is over, they're going to realize they're going to be stuck in the chains where Satan is right now. And they're going to be there eternally with Satan in torment. So... When there are no rules, there's no standard of authority or judgment. You can't make any judgments. If you reject God's word, you cannot judge anything or anybody. And so what happens? You become free of feeling you are doing something wrong. And the people love it so. You know, Jeremiah 531, my people love it so. Why? Because things were not right. And the people wanted to accept that. That's the world we live in today. People don't want God telling them how they're supposed to live. They want to do their own thing. So religious error, no matter how honestly and sincerely believed, cannot make one free from sin. See, only the truth can do that. And if you've heard the truth, do you understand it? And do you believe it? And have you obeyed the truth that you might be saved and made free from sin? Yeah, and why put it off? You know, today is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. So take advantage of this opportunity. Get yourself right with God by obeying the truth. And if you need assistance there, just send us a, a message and, and we'll respond and, and tell you what you need to do and get you in contact with somebody who can help you. So uh, think about those things. That's going to be our lesson for today. And... Uh, just remember, the truth that frees comes from God. The truth that imprisons comes from Satan. So think about those things, and Lord willing, we'll be back with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.